All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to I Command, and we are in full preview article season for season ten. So, for those that don't know, whenever a new season comes out, we spend a week doing articles previewing the cards, uh, giving players a chance to see the cards and comment on them before they go live on Vassal, and before we start the playtesting league for the season, which will last two months. So we are, let's see, it's currently Tuesday, July 2nd. I've been a little bit behind, kind of had a busy Monday and a busy weekend trying to get the everything ready for these. Didn't have a chance to make videos, but I want to make uh, some videos covering the cards as they get spoiled. So... Uh, Obviously, I have been working on these cards uh, as one of the steering committee members, but I'm going to do this video and I'm going to pretend like I'm looking at these cards for the first time and how I would react as a player to seeing them. I'm going to pretend like I haven't been spending the last uh, three months, or in some cases six months, and in some cases years, working on these cards uh, with the steering committee and with the playtesting league, um, with the uh, pre-playtesting players. And uh, I'm just going to react to them like I would if they were brand new cards from another game company or something. So, um, looking forward to that. Let me know what you guys think about these cards uh, down below in the comments. I love to hear from players, especially those of you who aren't in the Discord and don't play online. I love to hear from you guys if you're an Imperial Assault player, a Skirmish player that plays vanilla, or if you play like ICP just at home, casually. love to hear your guys' comments. Please comment below. All right, let's get into it. This is Monday spoiler article from July 4, July 1st, written by uh, Wesley Klamis, a.k.a. The Second Flock. And we've got, I believe, three cards here. So let's scroll down. I'm going to ignore all this beautiful text that Wesley has written and just go to the card. All right, first card is going to be Close the Gap. So this is a rework of an FFG card that was two points. Uh, close the Gap said at the end of the round each of your brawlers may move one space uh pretty terrible card uh, it was not played at all for two points just didn't have room so now we have close the gap has been increased to three points and it says use at the start of a round each friendly brawler may move up to two spaces then each friendly brawler within four spaces of a hostile figure gains one block power token okay this is cool so um, it doesn't have a cap on how many figures it affects, so uh, my initial rating of it is the more brawlers you have in the list, the better this card gets. So lists that have are running things like Riot Troopers uh, are going to like this card a lot. Uh, things that, oh, Wookiee Warriors, uh, those are brawlers, so those are going to like this card a lot. What else? Gamor I mean, Gamorrean's right there on the art. Gamorrean Guards, uh, Tusken Raiders are brawlers that are cheap. Those are all four point. Uh, figures, four points a figure. So, uh, lots of good ways to do that. Uh, interesting that it gives you the block token, so that's nice. So that's going to help those figures survive long enough uh, to actually get an attack off. Because that's the problem, right? Once you move once you move in with your figures, uh, most likely they're going to be it's going to be easier to attack with them, but it's also going to be easier for them to get attacked. So I can see how that one block token on each of them is going to help them uh, survive longer to be able to attack and then it's cool that you have to be within four spaces of a hostile figure so you know the average um, speed on a figure is four spaces and then if you're a brawler you might probably be melee so uh, you want to be within four spaces of a hostile figure but that's kind of cool because it's rewarding you for for being for moving aggressively so if you're trying to use this to move defensively and like move away, which you know is pretty counter to close the gap, um, you don't get the block token. So that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, this looks like it's going to be helpful for you know cheap brawlers. It'll be interesting to see if we see more expensive brawlers using this, like Vader or Rancors. Like Rancors can use this, but actually it would be pretty good with. It, actually, I could see this being good with Rancors. I guess they have a lot of command cards that they like to play that would be hard to fit a three-point card in, but, you know, at the start of the round, move two spaces and get a block token. Rancors love block tokens. Rancors love free movement because then they can play Pummel. So, yeah, I could see this um, being played in Rancors. So this looks cool. It's cool that Brawlers have a three-point card now that might actually be good. That's always kind of a cool thing we like to do for... 
uh, figure traits in Imperial Assault is, you know, like, in the old games, you had three-point cards, like, On the Lamb and Assassinate that made smugglers and hunters really good. So we find that uh, making really strong three-point cards for a trait can really help boost it, uh, boost its playability as a, a focus for a list. Okay, let's see. What's next? <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Capitalize. So new command card. Uh, doesn't have any figure restriction on it, so that's interesting. So it says, use when a command card where the cost of X is played, where X is equal to or less than the number of harmful conditions on hostile figures. Discard that card and cancel its effects. Okay, well, it's a calm disruption, uh, but for harmful conditions. So for those who didn't know, uh, calm disruption is a also a two-point command card that says you can basically counter an opponent's command card when they play it if its cost is equal to or less than the number of spy groups you have in your list. So in this case, we've got equal to uh, a much more uh, dynamic value, which is the number of harmful conditions on opponent's figures. Um, so that is something that's obviously going to be changing from round to round and even activation to activation. So this is, might be a little bit harder to use than Calm Disruption because, you know, when you build your list and you're like, okay, I'm going to put three spy groups in my list, now you know that Calm Disruption is going to be able to, at minimum, negate a three-point card until at least you start losing your spy groups. But this card is going to be much more variable in its usage. But that being said, you know, you can get more than three harmful conditions in play at a time if you really dedicate your list to it. Um, something like, I mean, HK-47 gives out a bleed uh, if the opponent doesn't want to take plus one damage, so that would help. And bleed is kind of nice because bleed is a condition that you often don't see people clearing. Whereas compared to, like, Weakened is a really strong condition, but it gets cleared automatically when the figure activates. And then Stun is really strong, but Stun is also one that you have to, like, the opponent pretty much has to clear it to do anything. But I could see lists that do a lot of Bleed. Um, bleed just kind of tends to stay there unless you clear it off with something like Heart of Freedom. But most of the time, they'll just take the strain from the Bleed and not want to waste an action to get rid of it because it's not stopping them from activating and doing their actions normally. So I could see this being very good in a list that's doing a lot of bleed. Um, wow, with, you know, with Scout Troopers, Scout Troopers have that surge for weaken, uh, so they would be very good with this. Um, in combination with Calm Disruption as well, you could run both of these, although that's four points out of your list. And at minimum, you know, just like Calm Disruption, this is at minimum always going to be able to be a negation. So it's like having a second negation in your list that costs two points instead of one. Um, if you can't, for some reason, get those harmful conditions to stick. So this is really cool, and um, it's nice to have more ways to try to counteract command cards. Command cards are getting very powerful. Um, they've been very powerful in the original game. They're still very powerful in, F in IACP. So good to have more ways to counter command cards. And a another kind of build around thing for harmful conditions, which we've kind of been toying with since like Punishing Strike and even earlier that with like HK Assassin droids, right? Those like to have conditions on things. Um, so this is kind of cool. It incentivizes you to put conditions out on the board uh, without letting them get removed. Okay, what's next? Okay, we have Moff Gideon has an updated card. So Moff Gideon came out in, I want to say, Season 6? Yeah, Season 6 we had Moff Gideon. Um, kind of went through a rough design patch and ultimately has pretty much doesn't get any play. People don't seem to like sacrificing their own figures for victory points, so... He's also just kind of hard because of map dependency. So let's see what we've got here. We've got Moff Gideon, still six points, has some new artwork with uh, the Darksaber, that's cool. Uh, we've got plus one block, surge for plus two damage, and surge for pierce three. Okay, so this stat line to me really reads Darksaber. This is like lightsaber stat line, um, right? Because 
Jedi have lightsabers, and they often have search for plus two damage and search for pierce three. He's got 11 health, so a nice, nice health upgrade to go with his, oh, with his melee attack. So he's now no longer ranged attack, he's melee attack. Blue, red, yellow with black defense slice and four speed. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I think that really represents better his depiction in the show. Um, we went back and looked at the show, and you actually can't really find him ever fighting with a blaster or even threatening someone with a blaster except for when he find he randomly found one on the floor after being defeated he always fights with a melee weapon whether it's the dark saber in seasons one and two or with like gauntlets in season three uh so he's definitely more of a melee uh f character in the show so that makes sense that he's now melee and then we've got two new abilities. Um, I know everything. It says, during setup, before drawing command cards, search your opponent's command deck and reveal two cards. Your opponent chooses one to shuffle back into the deck, then return the other card to the game box. So for those who don't know, returning a card to the game box is kind of like exiling in other games or banishing. It's basically the remove from game zone. It's no longer part of the discard pile or the deck. So you can't get it back with something like Leia's Military Efficiency or Bib Fortuna's Day Wana Wonga card. It's gone forever. Uh, but that's cool. The opponent gets to choose. So you get to look at their deck and you get to basically pick the two cards that you think are the most important to your opponent and then they have to choose to sacrifice one of them and then they get to keep the other one so that's pretty powerful um, also you get full knowledge of their command deck which is really good so not only do you get to make them sacrifice one of their p most powerful command cards you also get to come up with a good strategy for how you're going to deal with the rest of their command deck and make sure that you're if you know he's a spy so if you've got calm disruption in your deck or intel leak uh, you're going to be making sure you're saving those for the right moment and the right card based on what's still in their deck. And then his second ability is, you have something I want. And it says, once during your activation, choose a condition or token on a hostile figure within six spaces. That figure suffers three damage unless it transfers the chosen token to you. So that's cool. So basically you can run around the map and be like, hey, that focus token you have, I want it. Give it to me or you're going to take three damage. That's kind of cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see how players uh, manage the choice of the damage or losing the token. I suspect a focus token will be worth taking three damage to keep, especially if it's on a figure that hasn't activated yet. But I suspect like, if all he has to choose from is power tokens, he'll probably be stealing power tokens pretty successfully where you don't want to suffer three damage just to keep a block power token. That doesn't that math doesn't work out. So it'll be interesting. I think he'll be doing a lot of both dealing damage to things with this and stealing tokens with this. Um, and a reminder, our conditions are tokens. So focus, hidden, those are both tokens. It's nice that you get to choose the token specifically and not just the figure. Because uh, otherwise I could see, like, it would be suck if you had a target that was both focused and weakened and you said well, like, give me one of your tokens and they're like okay here have this weekend so that would suck so it's nice that you choose the token specifically um, that's pretty powerful and I think that's going to help offset the fact that he's melee so I mean if he didn't have this ability to kind of reach out and either do damage or affect figures in some way at a distance I could see the fact, see it being hard for him to get much done with that four speed and melee attack. Uh, but this, with ha you have something I want. He's gonna be, he's gonna be able to affect the battlefield without having to attack first. And then once it's time for him to close in, I could see him actually doing some pretty good damage with that attack. Especially if he can steal a power token ahead of time. Like if he, if he could get a damaged power token from somebody that doesn't want to suffer three damage. Um, you can do some good damage. And that plus one block will help him as well as that increased health. So I think that's it for Monday. So those are the three new cards. Uh, exciting. I'm really excited for Moff Gideon. Um, I think he's been in the shadows way too long. And I think this card is going to be... It's both great to see Moff Gideon get played. But I think these two abilities are super unique. And th things we haven't seen played before. And I think it's going to really add a lot to the texture of the skirmish game by having this be part of the metagame. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you next time. We've got more articles, more spoilers to talk about for Tuesday. Uh, and then I think Wednesday the map's going to drop. And then we'll do more on Thursday and Friday. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will catch you next time.